Before making a character playable in a game like Demon Slayer, developers and designers often sit down and watch all the reference material that exists for a character. They analyze their moves frame by frame before coming up with a concept and then the full moveset for the character. I love doing this as well, and if this is something that you're also into, this is Demon Slayer character number 10 that we've done this for. And even though I don't think Mitsuri will end up being DLC for Hinokami Chronicles, I fully believe that a sequel is in the works and that she will be playable there. So with that in mind, let's see what type of character she will be in the game by analyzing all of her moves in the show. First of all, to make a complete moveset, we need all of these. And I'm happy to report that just like with Muichiro, I was able to gather all of these moves from Season 3 alone. I didn't have to dive into the manga at all, so Season 3 spoilers ahead, but nothing beyond that. And this time I want to start by talking about the concept for this character before diving into the specific moves. Mitsuri Kandoji, what do you think when you hear this name? Other than, wow, Globku really cannot pronounce it, huh? The first thing I think about is something that's very unique unique to her. No, stop. Get your mind out of the gutter. Shame on you. I'm talking about her sword, of course. It bends and extends like no other sword in the entire show so far. She has a gymnastics fighting style and reminds me a lot of the ribbon category that you see during the Olympics. And that gives her a range that not a lot of the other slayers have. So I'm thinking that she would be the first long range slayer. Not a zoner like Susamaru, but a character with long range normals like Rui, Daki or Enmu. That said, normals that have very long range tend to be very strong. So that plus having an assist, it might be kind of broken. Which means we're only going to give her that long range starting on her second attack. But that's definitely getting into specifics. So let's kick things off officially. Let's talk about the auto combo. This is the combo that you get when you mash the attack button with any character. It's basically three attacks plus a finisher. So let's focus on the three attacks for now. We would start with a close range attack. Her jab would not have any crazy range. You would need to be close to your opponent to start a combo. The second attack is when the sword finally extends and hits you multiple times. And I think that by making her blade only extend on the second hit, we are making sure that the character isn't immediately busted. Because if you're applying pressure, at least there will always be a gap on that first attack. And then the third time you hit that attack button, you keep the long range, but Mitsuri stops moving and lets the sword itself do a big attack flurry before choosing which finisher to go for. So let's move on to the finishers. In Demon Slayer, you can always choose to end your combo with a neutral finisher, an up finisher, which launches the target, or a down finisher, which knocks them down. For a neutral finisher, we're gonna give her another flurry of attacks. She does this while advancing, which makes sense because the neutral finisher is usually the most damaging of all finishers, but it also leaves you unsafe if you don't do any skills afterwards. So I like this option a lot. The up finisher is probably the coolest looking one. She winds up her sword and then shoots it upwards towards the opponent. She's able to hit them from long range, launching the opponent into the air, which allows her to follow up with an air combo if she wants to. And then the down finisher, we're gonna have Mitsuri spin and slash her sword down just like you see in this shot right here. Quick and simple. Moving on to her jumping attacks, I love it when the first jumping attack is a vertical slash. Because usually that means that it's got a very good hitbox. So a vertical slash with the extended sword, just like how you see it here. And then for the follow up, we can have something a little bit different. We're going to have her doing a backflip retreating with a flurry of attacks, jumping away from the opponent, which I believe would be a first in Demon Slayer. That may make it harder for her to pick up the combo afterwards, but I think it would make a new way for her to apply pressure that we've never seen before. By jumping away, you are attacking the opponent. And if they block, it's OK. You're running away. You're safe. If you want to extend the combo, maybe it's better if you go for the jumping dive attack. And for a jumping dive attack, she's going to flip and then she's going to... Okay, that's, that's a bit too much. This is just a jumping dive attack. Next, let's talk about her strong attack, where I've got something very unique too. Some would call it brave even. Not me, just people in general. This is the first retreating strong attack in Demon Slayer. In this game, strong attacks usually just stay in place or they advance towards the opponent. This would be the first one that retreats and that has its advantages and disadvantages. It's good because having an armored retreating attack, it's going to be very hard to punish even if you block it. So it's a strong attack that is safer than usual. But on the other hand, it's not possible to convert into a combo for free. You would need to spend a bar dashing or call an assist or a skill in order to extend the combo. 
fumble. So the reward isn't as good as it would be with other assists. And last but not least, before we move on to our skills, let's talk about our grab. Now, if you're a fan of Enmu's grab, you're gonna love this. What do you mean no one's a fan of Enmu's grab? She's gonna extend her sword and wrap it around your neck from really far away. So yeah, she's gonna have an Enmu grab. If it connects, she's gonna spin over you and slam you into the ground. But I do think it's about time slayers get that range. It can't be just the demons all the time. And with that, we are ready to move on to her skills. First up, let's start with a skill button, Love Breathing, Second Form Love Pangs. Pretty straightforward, Mitsuri lunges forward, does a single big slash that cuts the target at multiple angles. So it's one slash, but multiple cuts. This is gonna be your typical pressure tool, it's the easy skill to use and include in combos, and it has decent range to catch opponents or keep up the pressure after they escape your combos. Next up, the tilt skill is Love Breathing, Third Form, Cat Love Shower. Mitsuri jumps into the air and performs multiple slashes in quick succession, destroying attacks along the way and hitting the opponent if they're nearby. So this is mostly a combo skill, it doesn't have a lot of range because because Mitsuri is gonna jump into the air. It's got vertical range, but horizontally, it's not really the best. But it leaves Mitsuri in the air, and jumping attacks are typically the biggest damage dealers in the whole game. So her combo will most likely include canceling into this move as soon as possible, and then follow up with... I told you to tune it down! Last but not least, her guard skill is Love Breathing 6th form Cat-Legged Winds of Love. Now, I think this is actually her strongest breathing form. It probably deserved to be her ultimate, but it doesn't look like much in the show. She basically blocks a bunch of projectiles with this. Now, the move itself looks like a wall that she puts up with her blade, but there's no attack coming out of it. It's just a defensive move here. So what I'm thinking is, it's basically a Street Fighter parry. There's no damage dealt with a Street Fighter parry, but if the opponent just wants to spam projectiles, Projectiles, yeah, I'm happy to just parry all day. I'm building up meter and drive gauge, which in Demon Slayer would be the blue bar and the special bar, and it works on projectiles if you want to spam them from far away, or works on melee attacks if you're predictable with your offense. But it's actually very vulnerable to grabs and also unsafe if you whiff the move. So it works like a parry in Street Fighter, but it's not as safe as a parry in Street Fighter. But that makes it kind of unique for Demon Slayer and encourages the opponent to change up their approach, otherwise they're just giving you free meter. And speaking of meter, let's Spend some of that and use a bar to boost. When you boost, characters gain a boosted effect on their attacks, and Mitsuri would have this pink hue around her blade. Characters also gain an extra combo finisher, which for her would be Love Breathing First Form Shivers of First Love. This attack would be completely cinematic, a single slash hitting the target in multiple areas at once. And then for a surge animation, I'm gonna stitch a couple of moments together into a full cutscene. We're gonna start with Mitsuri spinning with her sword, but ending in this iconic pose right here. And just like with Muchiro, I think it would be cool if she gained her Slayer mark during this cutscene as well. So whilst the character is in Surge, they have the Demon Slayer mark, meaning they're stronger, which makes sense in the canon, but also in the game, because they're in Surge, and Surge is scary. And so we've reached our ultimate, Love Breathing 5th Form Swaying Love Wild Claw. And I've done some stitching here as well. First, we start with some running slashes. She is whipping her sword around, cutting everything in her path, but then she leaps into the air, moon on her back, fantastic shot before descending down with with her fifth form, and a gigantic pink tornado of slashes disintegrates everything in its path. That's a beautiful ultimate that I can't wait to see animated by CC2. So to summarize, this is the first Slayer with long range normals, her strong attack is a retreating armored move, and her grab hits from long range, triggering that Enmu PTSD that we all have underneath. We've got our second, third, and sixth forms on her skills, one is a long range move, another is a vertical move mainly for combos, and the other one works like a parry. We've also got her first form in her boosted finisher and her fifth form in her ultimate. Regarding her dash speed, I actually don't think this is a very fast character, so I can actually see her having a level 1 dash speed. Especially with her long range normals, you usually can't make those characters too fast, but she could definitely have a good damage multiplier, as the character is very tanky lore-wise, maybe even tankier than Urokodaki in the game. Who knows? And also as a bonus, give her an academy outfit. The paintbrush as a weapon doesn't have the range of her sword, but if you extend the brush with a paint effect, you can definitely make up for the lack of range that way and easily create an echo character. And that's Mitsuri in a nutshell. Let me know what you guys thought of the moveset and if you're looking for more, here's Muichiro right here. Thanks for watching. Bye.